cameras are such incredible machines. They're, they're beautiful in and of themselves. And, the, and whether you like digital or, or, or celluloid, um, there's emotions and the processes the organic things kick in, uh, it's, it's just magical. Everybody's had this thrill of taking a photo and when they get it back or analyze it, um, it's so different than what was in front of them. And it's so thrilling when it's captured and they can see it. Um, it's a very, very special medium. Very, very beautiful and infinitely deep. You know, it's um, likes and dislikes, a very subjective thing, obviously. So it's just my subjective focusing on these different photographs. And I made this selection first in my heart and mind. And then I checked a box. And 99 of my favorites are now in this uh, book. It's not an intellectual process. It's, an, if anything, an intuitive process based on something, you know, in me. The painting uh, or the photograph or the film remains the same, but it's the viewer that is the magic part of the whole process. Every viewer who stands in front of a certain photograph, they're getting a different thing. And I like to think of it as kind of like a circle goes from the photo to the viewer, back to the photo, a kind of a strange internal dialogue. It's like a beautiful storm comes over us, a thrilling, beautiful storm, a deep love and a flow of excitement in, in the brain. We all are seeking um, this, this feeling, I think, of love. I love organic phenomena. I love flesh. And I love the way light plays. So this is a thrilling, thrilling photograph to me. Even sores, small festering sores, um, if you don't know what they are, if you really look at them, it's incredible. As soon as you say the word sore, it changes it. And many times it may cease to be beautiful. They say there is a unity in life, so you could theoretically start at the beginning of the book and see a scenario that would hook them all together. I've not done that, but it could be scenes of a film and a story could emerge that connected all the images. I selected the order and it happened very rapidly. And uh, there was just one change. We came to a photograph of, I think it's three guys in a car that were looking like this at something off screen. And what was there was uh, not correct. It didn't uh, have, a, have a quite the right feel. And so uh, I went to a woman's shoe. And that, that kind of uh, tied it in an interesting way. This reminds me of a Hopper painting. And she doesn't know that you're out here. And so you're getting a kind of a, a peeping Tom kind of thing going. People, whether they uh, admit it or not, they, we like being voyeurs sometimes. Nighttime is a magical time, and this has a, a kind of very nighttime feeling. You wonder what's going on in the house. It's a lonely house because a lot of times when you look in a mirror, a window, you see maybe a little bit of a, a painting on the wall, or certain curtains, or a piece of furniture, or a person. And this has no indication that someone is really living there. So it might be a vacant house. There could be a vagrant in there. Maybe uh, just on this particular night, a drug addict and his girlfriend. But there was a person riding by on a uh, bicycle and uh, saw these lights on. And I think in a few minutes, the police are gonna come to this place. I know that this is uh, Joel Peter Whitcomb, and I think he is one of the 
the, the, the best. And I really think he's as much a painter as he is a photographer. There's a whole lot of things going on in this and plenty of room to dream. It's birth and death, it's women, it's um, flesh, it's, it's kind of the whole story. And uh, this thing of birth and death and being close to women, I'm not sure if that woman would be one you'd want to be close to. I don't know, I love curtains. Curtains hide things. And so I think that's a thrill, I always say, of a theater, that they have curtains. And then the curtains open and uh, they reveal a world. But this is, um, captures the thing of the home and people taking snapshots of their kids. And then, uh, yet um, sometimes you catch something that's more than what you think you, you caught. And so this picture, again, makes you dream. We all human beings are detectives and we feel, I think, inside somewhere that something's going on and we wanna know what it is. And we look around the world and we see clues. We see things going on and we try to put together um, the case like a detective. We gather together um, our take on what we see and build a scenario for ourselves of uh, what is going on. This is the last image in the book. That's Buddha. I was at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. There was a show I went to see of sandstone carvings that had come over from, I believe it was India, but it might have been many places in the East. And I was there with my second wife and my daughter. I got separated from them and I wandered deeper into this maze of beautiful things. And I came around a corner and I looked down a narrow corridor and there was a pedestal and my eyes went up the pedestal to the head of Buddha and the second I saw Buddha's head, boom, white light shot into me and I was filled with bliss, filled with happiness, felicite. <laughs> and I wish you all felicite. Thank you very much.